Masturbation is a very common activity. Most people see it as a safe sexual activity. Medicine and science have approved of masturbation, downplaying its effects and recommending it to everyday people. Yet as believers, we must know that masturbation is a sin and similar to all other sins, masturbation has very dangerous effects. Many Christians may not agree to the fact that masturbation is a sin since it's not explicitly written in the Bible. But in today's video, we'll talk about the dangerous effects of masturbation. As you listen, you will understand how masturbation is a sin and it really has bad effects. Now please like this video and share it to anyone that you know that might need this because you really don't know who is suffering from masturbation. And finally, please subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Masturbation is widely accepted by the world today. It's been said to be a preferred method of staying safe from sexually transmitted diseases and also unwanted pregnancy. A lot of Christians have gobbled this up in addition to the story that this sin was never even mentioned in the Bible. They forget that abstinence and sexual purity does the exact same thing, keeping you safe both physically and spiritually. A wise pastor was once told that masturbation wasn't a sin by a group of youths in his church and that he asked them if he could ask a simple question. He said yes. Then he asked, Jesus was single while on earth. He was also a young man. So do you ever think Jesus practiced masturbation? And they said no. Why? He asked them. Because Jesus was morally pure, they replied. And the pastor smiled. And if you then say Jesus was too pure to practice masturbation, why will you say masturbation isn't a bad thing? And then the youths held their peace. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, we see the Bible talk consistently about sexual immorality. The Bible isn't shy on the matter at all. Masturbation involves pleasing oneself sexually. So let's remember that God himself created sex and he created a means for humans to please themselves sexually. And that is under the covenant of marriage. Now let's see what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 1 to 9. Now for the matters you wrote about, it is good for a man not to have sexual relations with a woman. But since sexual immorality is occurring, each man should have sexual relations with his own wife and each woman with her own husband. The husband should fulfill his marital duty to his wife and likewise the wife to her husband. The wife does not have authority over her own body but yields it to her husband. In the same way, the husband does not have authority over his body, but yields it to the wife. Do not deprive each other except perhaps by mutual consent and for a time, so that ye may devote yourselves to prayer and then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. I say this as a concession, not as a command. I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God, and one has this gift, and another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows I say, It is good for them to stay unmarried, as I do, but if they cannot control themselves, they should marry. For it is better to marry than to burn with passion. The advice was for people not to get married, but eventually, because of sexual immorality and lack of self-control, people were advised to get married. Now, if masturbation was so good, it would have been recommended instead. But we see the Bible saying that men should have sex with women and vice versa in marriage. Masturbation is not seen as an option here. In fact, Paul even advises the husbands and the wives to have sex frequently so as not to give room to the devil. He said the husband and the wife do not have authority over their body. Now what does this even mean? Could this be that the man and the woman do not sustain the ability to please themselves? Paul again states in verses 8 and 9, he would prefer that the unmarried and the widows stay that way, but they should get married in the case that they cannot control themselves. So the Bible says that the only way that is acceptable to lose control in terms of sexual pleasure is by having a spouse who you do this activity with. This is the way that God designed sex and this is how sexual pleasure is to be derived between two people, a man and a woman in marriage. If it's done any other way, it's a sin. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more life-changing videos like this. Remember the purpose of your creation is to glorify Jesus 
in partnership with the Holy Spirit, and Jesus in turn glorifies God. Now, how does masturbation glorify God? It doesn't. Masturbation is done as a result of lack of self-control and to please oneself sexually. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. The Bible says that we should always be full of the Spirit, meaning that we also have His fruits in us. Practicing masturbation is deliberately disobeying the Spirit. Masturbation has many effects. The world seems to mention only one negative effect of masturbation, and that's addiction. They downplay the effect of this addiction compared to that of others. Some time ago, a well-known journalist was suspended for masturbating during a Zoom call. If this act is so pleasing, it shouldn't have been that way. So some of the dangers of masturbation are 1. You can lose your job. Like this true story above, masturbation isn't something you want to be caught doing anywhere. 2. You can lose your spouse. Masturbation is a sexual activity, so you feel satisfied, thereby decreasing the need to have sexual relations with your spouse. And slowly, the marriage begins to die. And Satan can come in through this to destroy your home, as Paul had said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. Number 3. You can lose your relationship with God. As we've already ascertained, masturbation is a sin. And if you continue walking in sin instead of repenting, the Holy Spirit will not be able to stay in your life. Number four, isolation. Like we said earlier, masturbation isn't a public thing. No one does masturbation for others to see, and people who are into this tend to withdraw from everyone else. They found a pleasure in something that cuts them off the reality of life. Number five, lack of friends. You can't have friends, or at least true friends, when you're masturbating. First of all, it's not something you want to discuss with others, and this particular sin doesn't help you create time. Number 6. Guilt and Shame A lot of people who masturbate feel guilty and they feel ashamed, and this guilt and shame can also lead you to isolation. Number 7. It's hard to stop Yes, masturbation is addictive. A lot of people get addicted to masturbation, and even when they want to stop, they find it very difficult. Number 8. You give the devil access into your life. The devil has access to the lives of people who commit sin, and the devil will use every opportunity he gets. If you're in the act of masturbation, this is a call from God for you to stop. As you can see, masturbation has many dangerous effects that reduces the quality of life. It reduces the quality of life that God wants for you. Masturbation is very difficult to stop, especially when you're addicted to it. And for those of you battling with masturbation, you need to do the following. 1. Accept that it's a sin. 2. Accept that there is nothing that God cannot do. No matter how difficult it is, God sustains the power to help you. Now God says in Jeremiah 32 verses 27, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? God is able. Identify your triggers and work against it. If you get triggered by being alone, avoid it. If your trigger is sexual movies or music, avoid it. Number four, don't be so hard on yourself. It's the same thing as withdrawing from alcohol. Take one step at a time and celebrate every victory that you get. Don't let others talk down your progress also. It's not as easy as people think it to be. Number six, don't give up. Even if you slip up, don't give up start again and if you don't give up on eating then you shouldn't give up on stopping masturbation no matter what keep trying to quit it doesn't matter how far you've gone you're never too far to stop and number six pray pray and pray never get tired of praying to god only him sustains the ability to help you i pray that god helps you to make up your mind to stop masturbating it is one of the things that the enemy has used to deceive many christians now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it, share it, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for listening, and God bless you.